We've come here today just to have a follow up with Moscow, who is a male colleague, help it cross. He's now one year old. Rebecca and Grant contacted me um, in the back end of lockdown last year. They were having some quite serious problems with aggression. He was actually attacking them due to an issue with his prey drive, chase drive instinct. Um, huge amount of young dog frustration and irritability. Um, had got himself into a real pickle and things were pretty sad. So just wanted to really give everybody an overview today of what a serious case workup looks like, the impact that has on the client um, from an emotional perspective as well as a lifestyle one um, and then bring you right the way around to having had and done all the work um, and come out the other end with a positive result. I guess Rebecca will just start, just want to kind of fire a series of questions at you really just to give people mm. an idea. Um, what a case workup looks like, you know, at what point you reached out. So just give us a bit of background on Moscow. Yeah. What was, where did you get him from? <laughs> so we got him in the slightly unlikely set of circumstances, um, which is how I like to acquire all my pets. <laughs> he was a lockdown one puppy um, who was surrendered to a rescue um, last autumn. And I think the family that had him couldn't cope. They went back to work. They had two adolescent border collies. So Moscow went to a rescue and he was in a foster home for a little bit. He went to my sister-in-law and they were looking for a dog. They had him for a few days and her husband was extremely allergic to him. At this point we sort of, we knew that they had the dog. We'd been thinking about getting a dog for a while and we, and they said, oh, you know, he's lovely. Sounds like a mad spur of the moment decision. Um, we did actually think it through a little bit. We said, <laughs> well, we'll take him. Cause I couldn't, I didn't want him to go back into a rescue again. I sure. thought, you know, he's only six months old. Yeah. Uh, he looked like a lovely dog. Um, we thought we've got time, we're at home. Let's go for it. Yep. Um, so we did. We were told that he was a collie. Um, we actually had him DNA tested and discovered that he was a quarter Kelpie and three quarters collie. Okay. Um, for the first few weeks, he was lovely. Um, he was he was like a lot of energy. He was a young puppy. He'd been through a lot, um, but he was house trained. He slept in his crate. Yeah. Um, he was very sweet. First few weeks were fine. Gradually, um, we noticed behaviors starting to creep in that were becoming a real issue he wanted to chase everything that he saw when we were on a walk okay. um, so cars people joggers children bikes um, so you'd be walking along with him it felt very unsafe he was quite big quite strong he would bark he would lunge so just going 20 meters down the road was incredibly stressful um, yeah. and getting more and more stressful for him and for us so it just got worse and worse yeah and then in the house, he was very triggered by either of us moving towards the front door, didn't like us leaving the house, which progressed to then trying to control where you moved around the house. Yep. Um, and he would start to basically hurt us, nipping us, moving us in the direction he wanted us to go in, penning us into behind a kitchen cupboard or, you know. Yep. Um, and he was clearly obviously very stressed out by this situation and so were we yeah. um, and it'd be things like if the doorbell rang um, or if there was a sudden movement anywhere yeah leap to his feet start barking um, start charging at us yeah and that would escalate into biting so were you frightened of him terrified because you know he it was awful because it felt like he was in such a panic yeah we, you know we couldn't get through to him um, and when he first started doing it we would be able to move him into a sort of time out in the downstairs bathroom, um, leave him there for a couple of minutes and that would generally calm him down. Yeah. As it got worse, it got harder and harder to move him safely anywhere. This escalation would happen, he would lose his mind, you might get him into the downstairs toilet, 
bring him back out again. Five minutes later, the same thing would happen again, only wow, worse. Yeah. So you were li- we were living in fear of this horrible sort of cycle. It was escalating in nature as well, so it felt like his triggers were becoming more and more. If I just raised my voice to say something to Grant, who was in another room, yeah. that would be enough for him to leap to his feet and start doing this barking, herding, yes. sniffing behaviour. And did he hurt you? Did, 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 he did, yeah. I mean, I was covered in bruises. Like, he would go for underneath your arms. Yeah, yeah he, it really hurt. It was horrible. And we didn't have many visitors at the time because it was lockdown, but he had a real issue with, like, Grant's mum would come and visit. She was in our bubble. When she tried to leave, he would do the same thing to her, which yeah. is horrible. It's not what you want to happen to your guests at the end of their stay. Yeah. Um, so it felt really out of control. By the time we met you, I think it was probably happening every single day. Yeah. Um, and how did that process come about? So obviously everybody kind of finds me from different sources. Mm. So you guys came to me through your vet. Through the vet, you ask yeah. or We've been obsessively researching online what to do. Yeah. Um, and we felt really alone. And it was awful, um, partly because during lockdown it felt like it was very hard to access help anyway. Yeah. Um, so we were in this horrible situation where we felt like we were trapped in the house with him. But when we took him out of the house, he was also reactive and bulky. From looking online, I realised that the best thing to do, the first thing to do, would be to go to the vet yeah. to rule out any physical yeah, issues. Absolutely. And, and also because my understanding is that's the best way to be referred to a behaviourist is via your vet. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I did that and they referred us to you. Yeah. Um, and we were in such a terrible state that weekend. I mean, it was, it was awful because I think that morning he had had me trapped in the living room, um, barking and biting yeah, at me. Bad. So we were really at a point where we thought, well, we're going to have to give this dog up if we can't fix this. We can't yeah. live like this. Just, you know, he's obviously very unhappy as well. And yeah. we were really unhappy. I think from my perspective, you know, getting those early calls, that's quite common for me. Um, I think when you get messages and emails and stuff come through from clients that have been referred from vets, there's kind of a normal pattern of thinking of, OK, in the breed, taking the breed characteristics into account, I kind of know what I'm dealing with. I think even I underestimated until we spoke how severe the problem actually yeah. was and actually one of the you know the fact that you came from the vet was a good thing because this is this was so severe that actually I was already thinking outside the box of have we got a pain trauma trigger here um, he's obviously been rehomed he's had a couple of homes and often dogs will instinctively do their prey drivey chase driving instinctive behaviors when they've lost control of everything else yeah. but you'll see them at a really extreme level so have i got some sort of ptsd behavior um is he going to need some sort of uh, medical help and intervention at some point how much can i do and i think my window to fix this was really small when we met from the process that started and obviously you had a questionnaire to fill out um, and send me videos so that I could prep for it and we had a call together to try and you know get things in place and I wasn't seeing lots of people at that time because of the lockdown scenario but we arranged a Covid safe visit yeah. didn't we so that I could yeah. get out yeah. and try and be with him and feel what energy he had and you know how serious was this you know not just for you guys but for him yeah. because if we miss something medically um, we're doing the dog a, a, a disservice you know we needed needed to be aware what are we dealing with and what are all the motivators for it obviously I have a perception I see clients all the time and I have you know a method a process I go through to develop a relationship with my clients did you feel that immediately right we're good we know what we're doing with this or were you still really worried you didn't know mm. me so mm. it'd be really nice to hear what your perspective was on that so I can remember really clearly like my first phone call with you where I was like really upset you know in tears for most of it so at that point Moscow was muzzled in the house because yeah. you know, we were so yeah, frightened of him. But he was actually sat on the sofa next to me and I've never heard anyone be so horrified by the idea of him sitting on the sofa <laughs> next to me. And me Wearing saying, a right, muzzle. that's it, we're going to have to break the bond between <laughs> the two And I was like, okay, clearly we've got everything possible wrong that we've been doing with him, it's not worked. So we have to, you know... Yeah, dig deep. We, yeah. yeah, we're going to have to change everything. So that's fine. I still felt very unsure. I think what actually was the sort of turning point was we had the Zoom call with you um, and then I remember Grant asking you how quickly we'd start to see some changes not to fix everything but yeah. you feel very alone and you're you can go online and google all these issues and you can find so many conflicting ideas about what yeah. to do and what not to do you can try something you don't think that it's working then you change it again but to have somebody say you know this is the plan we're going to follow this plan and you will start to see some changes yeah. very quickly even yeah. if they're not it's not fixing everything immediately yeah. you can't do that that was really reassuring there is going to be um, a point at which things will start to change or if they don't start to change that tells us something about where Moscow is yeah and what was also really 
important to us was, you know, we were still really unsure whether we would keep him. And I was really upset by the thought that he might then go back into another rescue and his problems would continue to escalate and it wasn't his fault and sure. I didn't want that to happen. Yeah. But what was really valuable for us was your ability to frame this as, you know, whatever happened, whatever the outcome was, it would be better for him. If we had to rehome him, we would find a way of doing that that would meet his yeah. needs. Um, and so that was really reassuring because it took away a lot of the pressure where you're thinking, we have to keep this dog, but we can't keep this dog. Yeah, and, you know, forever that's, life. That's and horrible. Yeah, um, absolutely. Then we started putting into place the things you wanted us to do, like putting the baby gates up. Yeah. You know, keeping him in his area of the house. Yeah. Making him work for things. Yeah. It was a massive change for us. Like, yeah. you know, we, he was used to just roaming around the house <laughs> doing what he wanted. But very quickly we could see that it would work because it removed a lot of the pressure from us. We were able to have time away from him where we could actually think clearly about yeah. the problem yeah. rather than being scared because he was going to start jumping up and biting us. Yeah. And, and he, away from you, liked to learn to relax. He did. I mean, it space. took him a few days, yeah. you know, and he I, it wasn't it wasn't just that we started doing this and he just immediately calmed down. He yeah. would have uh, no. barking and, you know, 100%. trying to get out. And memorably, at one point, he broke through the baby gate, ran around the house barking and biting. Yeah. Um, but that was pretty much the last time he did it, actually. And, and I think, really, the turning point for me was until I actually visually and physically worked with him I think I was still very much I don't know if I can do this yeah. I was of the mindset that this dog has an extremely strong working drive there's a lady Barbara Sykes who is an amazing contact who's another behaviorist who works specifically with collies and even I reached out to her because he was such an extreme case she was great support for me and I think that was really important from my perspective because this was not a straightforward case mm. whatsoever um, so I think it's all very well for me to set a plan but until you actually work with the owners in their, you know, their energy, their space, and that dog, it doesn't really come together until that point. And I know we had quite detailed conversations over what avenues have we got here. We've established we haven't got a medical condition going on. If we've got some trauma that's, that's been there, there's no direct evidence of that, but we can support him regardless. We need to consider that the behavior he's doing right now is unacceptable yeah. and not safe and fundamentally dangerous not just for you but for members of the public and other people's dogs and traffic if you were pulled in the yeah. road so you know my goal really was to find a, a way to establish a, and teach a stop which is obviously ultimately what we did to take the edge off that reactivity um, which really helped and, and was a big turning point how many months are we now how many weeks are we into so I think now you came now? at the end of March so this is week six or seven. Yes, just because of the way the collie brain works, I wanted to get you over that three week yeah. period because I was always worried they're very habitual and that we might get to two or three weeks and he just reverts right yeah. back to the start yeah. again and we've completely failed. So, you know, we are pretty much out of the woods. The conversations that we're having today are very much more normal young dog, adolescent yeah. dog, confidence building yeah. stuff where we want to get him not looking at the triggers at all, but actually coming back and focusing on you, which is more normal stuff really yeah. that we would expect to be working with colleagues so you know the journey as a whole do you feel like you're starting to come through the other side of it now are you way more confident with him much more and it's changed our entire relationship with him for the better like we've, we've learned what we need to do to bring out the best in him which yep. is to, you know to show him strong leadership he has responded so well to that and he's worked really really yep. hard for us he's such a willing dog in lots of ways and it sounds ridiculous to say about a dog that was biting you in the house but <laughs> there was always deep down that he's a lovely dog yep. and we always felt that he was a lovely dog yeah. it's just that we were getting everything wrong which was making him get everything wrong absolutely so it was up to us to try and you know yeah. find a way out of this mess and yeah. whether that was him staying with us which is what he will do now and what we wanted or preparing him to go somewhere where he you know could have a better life yeah as it happens he's actually responded so well just as a quick checklist of what we've got i mean we looked at his diet yeah. we put a feeding regime in place so we also just to support Moscow internally from a cognitive perspective as well as physically we put him on some salmon oil so omega threes and sixes and he's also on a nutraceutical a calming product just to help take the edge off of some of his anxiety so this is a supplement that has uh, works in line with the behavior program um, and it just 
probably gives us another 10% just to help keep him a little bit calmer. We created a, a safe zone yep. for him with respect to the utility yep. area. We changed your relationship from being an emotional needy one. We put some structure around his walks. Um, we obviously shut down the reactivity with management skills. And we're now looking to build his, his confidence yep. and his focus. So it's been a journey. <laughs> um, looking at him today, literally has completely and utterly blown me away. I mean, I don't know if you were going to do this again. Would you do this again? Like, if you knew what you know now? Would... It's, it's such a good question. I think, like, it's been so hard, like one of the hardest things I've ever done. But now, of course, I'm at a point where I can say, well, no, it's like, it's great. It's been so rewarding. And yeah. he is such a lovely dog and we've learned so much. And I think, you know, like one of the hardest things was actually getting to that point where you're asking for help because you just feel like you're stupid and that you've got yeah. everything wrong. Um, and that people will judge you for that. There is help out there. These things yeah. can be fixed. Um, not always in the way that you want them to be fixed, actually. No. But there is always a solution that can be found. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so would I do it again? I mean, I think <laughs> I would think very carefully, <laughs> more carefully about what I was doing. I think it's amazing. Where is he? Is he going to come around and say hi? Come say on, hello my to boy. Jeff. Come on, my darling. Hello. <laughs> oh, Don. I was such a clever boy, never thought I would see the day. I literally never thought I'd see the day. You are amazeballs.